Hey everybody, so I've got one more Unit 6 Histology Review video for you, and this will be on the neurohistology of the brain and the spinal cord. There are a lot of slides to go through, so I'm going to go one by one, and I'm going to follow the order that's in the lab manual. So first up, we have a cow spinal cord uh, stained with thionin, which is picked up by uh, nucleic acids. So here's the slide itself. Uh, we're going to zoom in over here to the ventral horn. And remember that the orientation here is actually flipped from what we're used to seeing. Um, in this slide, dorsal is down here, even though normally we see it at the top. All right, so let's take a closer look. So all this purple stuff that's being picked up is called a nissel substance. And you can see that it's filling the uh, neuronal cell body, also known as the perikaryon. Here's the nucleus right here. The dark purple spot in the middle is the nucleolus. And in the cytoplasm, you can see a lot of uh, nissel substance as well because the rough ER also has uh, RNA. And the lab manual asks us to look for some axon helix. So in order to find that, you're looking for an extension from the neuron cell body that is absent of uh, nissel substance. And I believe I found another one on the other side. Let's take a look. Yeah, looks like it's it right here. So here's your neuronal cell body with the nucleus in the middle, and this looks like an axon helix. And this next slide is all about differentiating between the different segments of the spinal cord. So going from left to right, we have the cervical, uh, spinal cord, thoracic, lumbar, and sacral. So let's take a look at the cervical first. Um, low power, you can see that there's a lot of white matter relative to the gray matter, which makes sense because it has all of the ascending tracks from all the levels from below. And if we roughly outline where the gray matter is, you can see that the ventral horn here, there's a lateral extension. So if you compare it to the thoracic one, for example, this one doesn't extend out that far. But here you can see it goes pretty far laterally. And another thing to tip you off is if you see fasciculus gracilis here, as well as fasciculus cuneatus. And remember that gracilis gets sensory information from the legs and cuneatus gets sensory information from the arms. And the way I remember that is if you think about the way that your whole body is structured, the arms are farther out uh, compared to where your legs are. Now let's take a look at the thoracic, cervical, uh, thoracic spine. And here, similar to the cervical spine, we have a very thin uh, dorsal horn and a lot of white matter relative to gray matter. And if we outline the gray matter, you can actually kind of see a little bit of the intermediate horn. And if we take a closer look, I can see neuronal bodies as far out as about here. So you can see that clearly there is a little bump here for the sympathetics. And if we look at the lumbar spinal cord versus the sacral spinal cord, we can see that there's a much higher uh, ratio of gray matter to white matter compared to the thoracic or cervical. And uh, comparing lumbar versus sacral, there's um, that ratio of gray to white is even higher in the sacral spinal cord. And in the sacral spinal cord, there's just a very small cross-section in general. So moving on, on this slide, we can see the spinal cord with uh, the meninges and the dorsal root ganglia on either side. And now let's zoom into the ventral horn. And we can see that the color scheme is very different here. So this is a trichrome stain where the neural glial cells so these little guys right here, their cytoplasm is red. And we can see the neuronal cell bodies that uh, their nucleic acids now they're staining red. And all this stuff in the middle uh, is neural pill. And these are all the cellular processes of the neurons and the glial cells. And remember that these glial cells can be many different types of cells. It could be uh, it's mostly oligodendrocytes or astrocytes here, and I can't really tell the difference between those two. Um, the lab manual doesn't seem to make a big deal about differentiating the, the two on this slide, so I wouldn't worry about it. And anyway, we can see the astrocytes uh, much clearer in a different slide. And now let's take a closer look at the white matter. So if we zoom in here, uh, we see this bubbly appearance. There's lots of, uh, looks like little holes where you have these a light blue shapes. Uh, these things, the light blue, are the actual axons. And in the space, uh, this is where the myelin used to be before it got washed out when the slide was being prepared. So these guys are all axons. 
And as the manual points out, when you see these uh, little round red guys here, these are the nuclei of the astrocytes. And now let's zoom in and take a closer look at the meninges. So on the outside we have uh, dura matter. It's this tightly packed material here. Um, immediately adherent to the spinal cord we have pia matter. And this is the arachnoid matter in the arachnoid space. Sometimes there will be bits of arachnoid matter that are attached to the pia down here. It's a little di hard to differentiate between pia and arachnoid down here. I think it's a little easier if we try to differentiate between uh, dura matter and arachnoid matter. So, for example, here you can see that the dura matter there's it's a little bit less cellular. Uh, you don't have, see as many nuclei, and uh, it's a lot cleaner and more tightly packed. Whereas the arachnoid matter it's a little messier. Um, I think that difference is even more clear over here. So this is where roughly I'd separate the dura matter over here and the arachnoid. Now let's look at the rootlets. So we have some dorsal rootlets here. And the ventral rootlets are down here. And remember the ventral rootlets don't actually uh, connect with the cells of the dorsal root ganglion here. They just kind of ride together with the axons of the DRG. And now let's take a closer look at the notorious DRG. And the manual classifies these DRG neurons into two types. So we have these bigger ones with fine granules in them. So all these big guys here. And we have some of these smaller ones here. And these larger cells are sending information about uh, touch, pressure, and vibration. The smaller ones are sending information about uh, temperature and pain. And the way I'm going to remember that is uh, since these big ones uh, sounds like they send information to the dorsal columns, right? Pressure, touch, and um, and vibration. Uh, D for dorsal, and these guys are, uh, they got some big D energy. And the DRG is a good place to look for some axon helix as well. Uh, so remember, we're looking for spots that don't have uh, granules, so it looks like these are probably the axon helix of their neurons. Another thing to point out here are these satellite glial cells. Their job is to provide uh, nutrients for the neuronal cell bodies. And there's this question in the HISTO lab manual that um, is a little confusing. It's asking about where these satellite glial cells are relative to the neuron and the basement membrane of the neuron. I was a little confused about this myself, so I did check with Dr. QB. The answer is B. So. So the uh, satellite cells are inside the basement membrane, uh, directly interacting with the ganglion cells. And that makes sense if you think about it. Um, if their job is to nourish the, the neurons, they're going to be uh, intimately connected with it. And if you look closely, you can see if this is the basement membrane, looks like it looks like these are inside. Same with here. And I think that's even clearer on this picture. Uh, so this is from the Wikipedia page on satellite glial cells. So here's the neuron cell membrane, and you can see the... Um, or this is the neuron cell body, and you can see the basement membrane over here. And these satellite glial cells are inside. And the last thing I'll mention is that, uh, just like it says here in the lab manual, there are no synapses or neuropil within the DRG itself. And this slide uh, uses different stains, so uh, you can see the neural pill is pinkish, and if we zoom in on the white matter, the myelin here is actually better preserved, so you can see these are the axons, these dark circles. And you can better see the myelin surrounding each of the axons. This is another slide that's uh, uh, good for looking at myelin. It's actually stained specifically only for myelin. Looks like dorsal is actually down here. So I'll zoom in. So you can see all these rings of myelin and uh, the cross sections of axons would be in the middle. And this next slide is uh, good for looking at astrocytes. This is a piece of the human cerebral cortex. Uh, this lighter staining area here is the gray matter, and the darker staining area is the white matter. And remember the astrocytes are glial cells that are kind of star-shaped and they have lots of these um, cellular processes. 
And one of the jobs of the astrocytes is to make part of the blood-brain barrier. So let's zoom in on the white matter here. So here we can see lots of astrocytes because the stain is specifically staining for astrocytes. We've got these two blood vessels here. And you can see all these foot processes extending uh, towards the blood vessel to become part of the blood-brain barrier. So this coating of blood vessels uh, by the astrocyte uh, end processes, it's called the perivascular gliolimitans, but there's also an external gliolimitans. So let's take a look at that now. So let's zoom into where we can find some pia matter. And you can see here how there are astrocyte processes that are extending towards the pia matter over here. It's going to form this layer called the external glia limitans, uh, just deep to the pia matter. And here's a schematic from a Nature article on what that uh, relationship between the external glia limitans and the pia matter looks like. And on this next slide, we're mostly interested in the central canal here. Uh, it's lined by appendable cells, so these are the ones that are secreting CSF. And you can see this uh, simple cuboidal ep uh, appendable cells are ciliated, so not only are they creating the CSF, they're kind of uh, brushing along to keep it moving. And just a quick note about the central canal, this is the thing that uh, expands when you have uh, syringomyelia, uh, but normally uh, this would close off with age. And on this next slide, we have some more cerebral cortex. Uh, we have the hippocampus right here uh, with the lateral ventricle and the choroid plexus within it. So let's zoom in over here. And the manual talks about the choroidal lamina, which is where the uh, choroid plexus connects with the rest of the brain tissue. It's a little messy, but you can see that here. And you can see all these little islands are uh, part of the choroid plexus. So the lab manual talks about how this is inside out compared to the rest of the brain. What they're talking about is on the outside of the choroid plexus you have the pentamoglial glial cells that are creating CSF and in the middle is pia mater. So before we saw that the pia mater was kind of on the outside of the brain and the spinal cord but here it's on the inside. And notice that within the pia mater of the choroid plexus there are lots of blood vessels as well. And also note that uh, where brain tissue interfaces with the uh, uh, ventricles, it's lined by appendable cells. So that's what these guys are here. Uh, they do look a little different from the choroidal appendable cells, though. Good luck on exams, everyone.